Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 26th of January, as always. We have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, I dived into the brand new Azure Elastic SAN. This enables me to have an iSCSI target that's natively hosted as Azure Storage, which is really useful for a lot of different scenarios for my workloads, including Azure VMware solution. And then obviously SQL 2014 end of life is approaching. What are my options to find them? Ideally get off of SQL 2014, but if I have to keep it, how do I get those extended security updates? On to what's new on the compute side. So the automatic image creation with the Azure Image Builder that's based on that Packer technology is now GA. So what this enables me to do is if I think about I have some base image that I'm creating my image off of. It's very common for organizations to require their own customizations to images. Well, now what I can do is when that base image has updates, it will automatically trigger my custom build and then it will go and create my own new version. I can have up to 100 triggers uh, per region per subscription. The dependency agent now supports RHEL 8.6. So there's this big move away from the old log analytics agent to the Azure monitor agent. To get parity with some of the capabilities, there's the updated dependency agent that can tell me about the processes running inside my virtual machines, any external process dependencies. Well, now this updated dependency agent that works with the Azure monitor agent works for RHEL 8.6. So it's gonna help me now get those additional capabilities with, for example, VM Insights, where I can see process maps and all those different types of uh, dependency mapping available. And then Azure Automation has added runtime environments in preview. So ordinarily, my automation account has a certain set of extra things I can add like modules. Well then, my individual runbooks may want different versions of those dependencies which can clash. What this capability does is now for each runbook, it has, yes, obviously the script it's gonna run, but its own associated runtime environment. And that runtime environment can select the language, PowerShell, Python, the runtime version, PowerShell 7.2, particular Python versions, and then packages required, which could be default ones available or your own customer provided. And another nice feature of this, with that PowerShell 7.2 runtime environment, you also get the Azure CLI commands now. But the whole point now is this is gonna cure those dependency clashes you may have had in the past within an automation account because now every run book can have its own defined runtime environment. On the database side, so Azure Data Explorer has new geospatial capabilities. Now there's a whole set of different functions it's added one of them is related to the fact that it's very common to break down the earth into these hexagon grids. Well, now it can work with those grids converting um, your different attributes you may have about location into those grids. That's really powerful for helping they determine nearest neighbor, closest path, things like that. It can calculate the angles between lines on the earth. Um, just really helping me anytime I need to do some mapping around the geometry um, from Azure Data Explorer, really useful for visualizing the data. And then Azure Monitor Logs, the dedicated cluster is now available for any commitment tier. So the dedicated cluster adds a bunch of functionality, AZ support, double encryption, customer managed key, customer lockbox. But before I think it was a 500 gigabyte commitment tier. Well, now it's for any commitment tier, so it could be as low as 100 gigabytes. And why this is nice is maybe I've got a whole bunch of different workspaces and none of them are big enough to hit a commitment tier and save me money. Well, now with this lower bar to entry, I could create a dedicated cluster. I move my workspaces into that cluster. So now I can buy a commitment tier for the sum of the space of all of the workspaces I've put inside. So this is a nice option that maybe opens up some more ability to save money. And then miscellaneous, um, the Custo query language graph matching has some enhancements. So remember graphs are all about the idea that we have nodes 
and then edges which connect the nodes. And this is useful for showing relationships between different entities. So now this is, has additional capabilities for closed paths, um, expressing nonlinear patterns, just some clever new things if I have some new types of relationships formed in my graph. And that was it. Uh, pretty quick this week. As always, I hope that was useful. Until the next update, take care.